1 Corinthians chapter number 1. We'll continue our look verse by verse through Paul's epistles. We're in 1 Corinthians, and um, we're dealing with an issue that we began looking at two weeks ago about baptism. We're in a passage in Paul's epistle to the, to the uh, Corinthians, the first one, where he's going to deal with the issue of baptism. And we're going to look at scripture to, to look at the issue of is baptism required for salvation and the different baptisms in scripture. Uh, there's a lot of confusion about baptism in scripture. So that's what we're going to uh, attempt to uh, tackle today. Uh, go with me as Paul tells Timothy as he ministers to the body of Christ in a local assembly to give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. So he's to read, he's to exhort, and to teach God's word. So we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and then pick up in our passage there in about verse, we were about verse 13, 14, so we'll, we'll get there in a minute. Follow along with me, if you will, and read along in your minds. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, Call to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of our Lord of the, of the Lord Je of, of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I, am, I of Apollos, I of, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I have baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Beside, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ, lest the cross of Christ should be made of non effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and, re and sancti sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless your mighty word as we study it. And most importantly, may we believe the things that you show us in it. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We left off uh, in, our, in our discussion, our, our, our our uh, look at is baptism required for salvation? And, and the reason I've been focusing on this is it's, it's, a, it's a confusing issue amongst Christians, particularly because they don't listen to the Apostle Paul. It is the Apostle Paul, our Apostle Paul, God's spokesman for you and I today as members of the body of Christ, yea, as people living in the dispensation of grace, whether lost or saved. Paul is given by God through the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 9.15, to give instruction to the Gentile world. 
We saw in the book of Acts study, in our first study, when God wants heathens to know about himself, he sends Paul. He sends Paul. Now today, because Paul is not alive, God put the word of God through Paul, those 13 epistles, Romans through Philemon. He put ministers like myself and Josh and all of us as ambassadors out there to tell those heathen about what God is doing. And today what God is doing is through what Paul says he's doing. And it is the Apostle Paul who's going to explain what God is doing. Well, last time we saw that what the, the problem here in Corinth is the problem in Christianity today. People are following men. We have radio, we have television, we have internet, we have all types of books and things. You go into a uh, out there in Coon Rapids there, there's a Northwestern bookstore. There's all type of different Bibles and books about, it's, it's endless. And there's the confusion because, by the way, there are a couple of books about the apostleship of Paul, which is interesting. Now, they're in there. But for the most part, there's nothing said about Paul's apostleship and how he's the one to give us understanding. Paul says to the Corinthians, he says, follow me, be ye followers of me, 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 11, be ye followers of me. He says, you might have 10,000 instructors, but I, you only have one father. I have begotten you through the gospel, talking about the gospel of grace. And it is the apostle Paul who says, I am the apostle of the Gentiles. And it will be Paul who gives us instruction on baptism. Now, I, I didn't put water baptism in there for a reason, because what we're going to learn is baptism is a, is a general word. There are a few different general words in scripture. Baptism is one of them. The word, the word to baptize. Baptismo in the Greek, baptize. It has to do with uh, to a total identification. That's, that's, this is the, the definition that fits every time baptism is used. We're going to look at it. To, 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 to total identification, okay? To be totally identified with something or something. Uh, the word gospel. The, the word gospel just simply means what? Good news. We, we were talking uh, as men on the break. Over there in Acts 17, before Paul could give them the good news, he had to give them the bad news that there was a day coming where God will judge them on their sins. So baptize is a general word, total identification. Gospel, good news. Church. Church is just a called out group of people, a called out, called out. Yeah, called out assembly, called out. So what we have here is just general terms. Baptism or baptize is just total identification. And, and, and the question is, is baptism required for salvation? And you know me, who've been around me, I'm gonna say yes and no. And it depends, okay? It depends on which baptism. Just like you ask which gospel, people say there's only one gospel. But if, if there's only one gospel, and that's the gospel that saves today, gospel of grace, that means Peter, James, and John, the Lord Jesus, and all of them were preaching that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again, but you know they weren't. They were preaching the gospel of the kingdom. If it's just one church, the church, the body of Christ, then what's the church over in Matthew 16 and Acts 2? There was added to the church, the church in Matthew 16, that was called the kingdom church. So with all of these things, you need to rightly divide. So we're going to see what baptism is today and what it isn't, okay? So is baptism required? Paul will give us understanding. Look with me, if you will, at verse number 14. I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. Now, that's a profound statement coming from an apostle. In Matthew chapter 28 and Mark 16 and, 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 all, uh, and, and Luke as well, you see the Lord Jesus Christ giving specific instructions to the 12 apostles, his 12 uh, apostles to Israel. When I say 12 apostles, it's four of them. Um, Judas is dead at this time and, and, uh, and Matthias is not. He, Matthias didn't come to Acts chapter 1. But you know what I'm saying? He's given instruction, the Great Commission. And he tells them, he says, go ye in all the world and make disciples of all nations, teaching them whatsoever I command you. He says, and baptize them in the name of what? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. So he tells them to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's the Godhead. He tells them to baptize the nations, the Gentiles. This is going to take place in the kingdom. There's the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. There's the Godhead, Okay. He tells them to go, and that has to do with water baptism. We're going to see that. Over in Acts chapter 2, though, verse 38, Peter tells Israel, because, by the way, you're to start with Israel. The Great Commission always started with Israel. Acts 2.38, he tells the men of Israel there at Pentecost to be baptized, not in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but in the name of what? Who? Jesus Christ. 
And, and the confusion in, 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 in denominationalism, you have denominations that will baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. 